Timbers defender, Zarek Valentin. We also have the U.S. Open Cup match on Wednesday. We're going to chat about that, but let's start with L.A. 1-1 draw. I know it was hot out there on Saturday afternoon. How are you and the group feeling about that game? Um, obviously, we, uh, we're disappointed we didn't get the win, but ultimately um, playing a very good L.A. team and getting a point off them is good. Fighting back from a goal down is always good, but um, um, I think if you watch the highlights, you'll see that we definitely had the better of the chances. Bingham had a very big day. Uh, kudos to him. But ultimately, like I said, we, we take the point and we keep moving forward. Tactically, teams are doing a lot of things different so far this year. Every team has their own identity. Against LA Galaxy, tried to overload across on your side, but a compliment to you. You had what you would call <laughs> Alessandrini in your pocket at signs. He wasn't able to get beyond you. How much do you enjoy being able to figure out teams tactically and what they have to offer from game to game? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I, I view soccer or football as a chess match more than anything else. And obviously, you know, teams will show their hand um, early in the games about what they want to do and what they want to accomplish. And, um, you know, sometimes in our formation, we allow spaces in different areas to, to basically make it more difficult for them. And, you know, we're giving up a lot, of, a, little, a lot of space on the wings to, you know, cut down their, you know, their, you know, their circles and spaces centrally. Mm -hmm. But overall, overall, I thought we did pretty well with it. Like I said, we didn't concede too, too much. I think they only had one or two shots on goalish, but I think we, we dominated the play on a very hot day. Uh, then on Wednesday night, the U.S. Open Cup, the round of 16, you guys taking on the San Jose Earthquakes, and uh, a wonderful result for the Timbers. 2-0 with a lot of young guys, the guys who haven't been playing too much in MLS play. Jeremy Obobese opened the scoring in the first half. Dyron Espria added one in the second half. You had a, a nice view from the bench for this one. Derek <laughs> resting up a little bit, uh, possibly for Saturday. Uh, your view on, on this match? I think it's just a testament to our depth. Yeah. Um, we have a very good team and a, and a lot of young pieces, and a lot of the guys that came in did well. Um, you know, played as if they were veterans, which, which is great to see. And ultimately, you know, the better our depth is, the better it's going to push the players who are in the starting spot. And like I said, having someone like Diego Chara sprinting down the field on counterattacks always Peace. helps. And, you know, you know, Didon, who's played in the MLS, scored some very big goals for this team in the past. Um, you know, that combination of uh, experience and, and youth is, uh, is something that will make this team deadly. You're saying that experience and youth. How is important is it in this game and also when you go into the regular season games for the, the younger players to be paired with the experienced players for you to be getting in the years of these youngsters to guide them along the way I'm looking at this game and I'm also looking regular season with guys like Paredes guys like Andy Polo who need the experience of veterans like yourself of course well it's one of those things where you know I, I figure the best way to you know integrate someone like that is to put someone young around a lot of veteran players who can help them out through the game and also through trainings because at times they'll make mistakes but if you know if you make a mistake and someone you know cleans it up for you AKA Diego Chara might help Christian out in that sense. <laughs> next thing you know, give him a pat on the butt and say, you know what, next time do this, this, and this. And then when the player does it correctly, they'll feel a lot more confident going forward. And like I said, we're all teammates and on the same team. So um, it's exciting to have each other's back and then to see these guys progress is, is the best part. Everybody seems to want to put their finger on it why the team are doing so well after the first two losses of the season. From the inside perspective, what is it for you that has made the team click and in this run of form? Um, I think it's really tough to, to put it necessarily on one specific thing. I think more of it is just, you know, playing collectively as a team. You know, when I when I give the team speech sometimes before the game, you know, I try to emphasize the fact that whatever we do, we do together. Whether we're defending, we defend as a unit, or whether we attack, we're all attacking together. So regardless, you know, if whenever we do these things together and we're on the same page, we're going to be a tough team to beat, whether, you know, that's in the Open Cup or whether that's in the, in the MLS uh, playoffs, hopefully. If you've been around social media around the Timbers this week, you probably read that oh, Zarek's uh, <laughs> got a little bet going on. He's going to wear a ribbon in his hair on Saturday against Sporting Kansas City. Uh, it started out as a bet, turned it into a really good good cause. Zarek, give us kind of the Cliff Notes story behind that. Yeah, basically I'll say the elevator pitch was that uh, a fan um, you know, that I met after the uh, – Thorns game that I always go to repeatedly would always uh, jokingly make a comment about how oh my favorite player is Rasso like you would you'd you'd look pretty cute with a bow in your hair and I was like oh cool I don't know if that's a compliment or not but regardless after two or three times he finally uh, placed a bet um, and said all right well if we get ten thousand how much you wear a bow and I go mm, okay let's do it um, less than twenty four hours later we had achieved that goal and um, basically decided you know what. The power of social media is pretty cool, and the Portland soccer community is pretty cool. Let's see if we can raise this another level. And said, you know what, we, we, we've gotten 10,000 retweets plus and X amount of likes and comments. You know what, let's see, you know, since it's Equality Month and I'm playing for equality, um, let's see if we can build this in and then obviously, you know, maybe create something where, you know, we have, you know, Rasso ribbons and the ribbons with a Z, and we take that theme and say, you know what, let's, let's donate these and, and sell them off at a game for minimally a dollar and take that money and, and donate it to um, you know, a local charity here in Portland. And like I said, you know, take this small 
you know, bet and, and make it bigger than us because that, that's what's most important. Taking things to another level, you've been taking your game to another level. You've cemented <laughs> your position in, uh, in Giovanni Savarese's team. What has been the big attribute to you that you feel that you, you've brought to the team and why your game has become, um, I shouldn't say become because you've always been so consistent for the team, but why you've become that staple in, in the defense for the Timbers? Um, I think Gio um, has allowed players to really express themselves and put them in the best possible way to, to, for them to play their best. And for me, you know, he's basically gone out there and, and taken what my strengths are and basically just said, you know what, focus on these strengths and, and do them to the best of your abilities and then the rest of the team will take care of a lot of those other things. And obviously I'm surrounded by some incredible players. I could list 15 of them that I've played around this year with, you know, four different center backs and multiple outside mids in front of me that really make my job easier. Mm -hmm. But, you know, obviously something that, you know, he's helped push me and I think that it's helped my game is, is just the communication aspect of it. You know, it keeps me more um, mentally on my toes when I'm helping other players get in moments and in spots and every set piece you see me yelling at people <laughs> and things like that, you know, allow me to stay mentally focused but also help me to, you know, try to help my teammates, you know, continually push because I'm the guy who's loud on and off the field. So, um, you know, take that and then, you know, help, you know, keep people focused and then let, you know, the attacking guys do their piece. With Johnny Russell coming in, Zarek, is this a trend that we're seeing more and more in MLS? Guys who want to be out and out attackers, 1v1 players who want to get isolated. I look throughout the season so far, Michael Barrios, look at Carlos Vela, you look at Alessandrini as well, guys who have come up around your side <laughs> and you've dealt with them. A lot of 1v1 guys. Is it a trend of MLS? Yeah, I think it definitely is. I mean, you want to bring in guys that, that can make a difference and, and provide that wow factor along with it. Obviously, you know, you know, they're, they're very good players, very experienced. All those guys have, you know, had time with their national teams at, at this or that or um, another time. But it's just one of those things where, you know, collectively as a group, we need to be aware, but not overly focused on one individual because, as you say, they're a very good team. And they can strike you from any any place. Obviously, you didn't mention Graham Zuzu, who helps uh, Russell yeah. out on the attack. <laughs> Obviously, you have uh, Crozet, who's another one of their big guys they brought in. So they have a very deep team, not to mention they also played three teenagers, I think, in the Cup or this yeah. past week against Minnesota, yeah. I think it was. So yeah. they have a very deep team that can, you know, hit you from a bunch of different angles. And, you know, when you focus in on one – on one player too much, then obviously they'll hit you from other places. So it's going to be a tough match, but it'll be a fun one. I think it'll be a good uh, footballing display. You mentioned more than one player. We're going to hear a lot of that stat about Diego Chara, 17 matches since the Timbers won without him. How do you guys deal with playing without Diego Chara? Listen, the Godfather is a big piece. Yeah. Um, I think anyone will uh, will admit that. But at the end of the day, you know, we've we've won and had situations this year where we're typically we haven't done that. We, we won in San Jose this year. We hadn't won there since I've been with the team. Uh, we won in Colorado. I think the team's only won once there since we've been a professional team, yep. and that was a late Jewsbury goal. Yep. So, you know, we're doing things this year that we typically haven't done, and obviously Diego's a big piece. But, you know, like Gio said, we, we've taken the next man up mentality this entire year and said, you know what, like, instead of looking at this this moment and saying, you know what, this, this really sucks, like, we're missing a good player, you know what, it has to be an opportunity for someone. And in the past, I've tried to use moments like this as an opportunity for myself, and whoever steps in, I'm going to preach that same exact thing to them. And, you know, like I said, it's going to be different. Difficult. Obviously, they have very good players, but you know, I think we have a decent team as well. And I always say, if we focus on our game and, and perform our tactics to the best of our ability at home with our fans, we're a tough team to beat.